working. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Um, if, so, again, um, welcome back today. Um, what we're going to be doing today is a little different than what we've done in the past. In the chat is the link for the, the video. Video. That thing over there. Um, the sheet. So today's plan is going to be what I call like a, a stream clinic. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the idea that someone's been playing Horn for only a couple months. Um, maybe they're, you know, you're still working on just getting a buzz, still getting a good sound to go. Um, and then we're going to progress through it. So again, the, the, the drive link is over on the side um, for the sheet music. And, and you can see the first page looks like the first couple pages from every band method book um, with my own little twist on it. Um, so we're not going to start with our usual G octave buzz thing. We're, we're going to start by just talking about the embouchure, finding a free buzz, and then jumping right in. As we go through this, the exercises become slightly more difficult. We've done, we, y'all have seen the power scales. Um, then we'll get into some basic lip slips, some scale work, um, and then articulation. That's the plan for today. Again, if, if, so this isn't going to be the usual stuff there's it's not going to be you know this isn't my warm-up this isn't my group session but this is based on a lot of clinics in it. so we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk about the buzz and how to get the buzz so we'll start with our free buzz um and i'm going to start by also plugging in my headphones because that's going to get old really quick so that was our pitch that was our g mm -hmm. um this is how every every everyone starts let's just go hey let's make that buzz there's your pitch. And so when we make a buzz, I always think the word mm, like, you know, or M&Ms, mm, we want the corners tight. Mm. So we feel that mm, activate. We think mm, poo, mm, <laughs> and that gets the buzz. So let's try that again. Take a big breath thing with that mm corners and blow a lot of air. <laughs> And we just tried a few times just just to get the air going. Um, this isn't an exercise one yet or a. Um, we're just working to get that sound. It really is. It's trying to find these corners. So try it again. You can aim at your hand. I always get people to do this because um, it gives us an external point to blow against. Um, we don't buzz by blocking the lips and blowing air. We buzz by blowing a, a healthy stream of air. And then the lips vibrate around it. Um, so try that again. So th take a spot on your hand, like the size of a quarter, and blow air to it. <sighs> and then start to bring the lips together by thinking the word mmm to make that buzz, right? <sighs> That's how this first exercise works. We're going to take a big breath on one and two, start blowing air, bring the lips together. So be like, <sighs> so we breathe on beat one and two, we start going. And I'm going to put on a metronome at 60. There you go. And let's work our way through this first exercise. Uh, one, two, three, four. We breathe in. Rest. Two, three. Breathe in. And this time, move the hand a little further away. Breathe in. Start close and move the hand. Go on, breathe in. Let me just repeat it. So breathe in. Breathe in through a woe shape. Two. One more time. And this is the last one. So breathe in. And I just made the message was on. Sorry, I'll get better at that, I swear. All right, so now we're going to jump in to that exercise right there, 1A. And we'll use the mouthpiece. And how this is going to work, the, the reason there's a measure of rest is it allows us to do this in canon, which you're going to hear a lot today. So there goes all right, so how it's going to work. 
stuck on my floor protector. Okay, how it'll work. Um, I'll go first. Then y'all follow four beats later. This is our, our typical call and response thing we do um, in these streams. Um, so those four beats of rest in there just make it so that there's time, right? So I'm going to go first. Um, and then y'all start breathing when I stop playing. That's the pitch we're going for. Um, that's the G. But if you get any of those notes, right, those are all good first notes for the horn to start on, right? C, E, or G. That's the one we're shooting for. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to blow air, slowly bring the lips together, get a vibration. So, three, four. Breathe in. Find the buzz. Breathe in. Find that buzz. Last one. Buzz. I'm going to turn the metronome on. I swear, I'm going to do it today. All right, now what I want to do is let's do it against the A, which is right there. So now we're going to introduce a drone to the process so you can hear it. And let's just do it together. And we'll do the same thing. I'll go first. Y'all go second. So here's your drone into metro. I'll start. Ready? Now what we're going to do, we're going to right away, we're just going to move this to the horn. Um, in a clinic situation, as long as the buzz is happening and it doesn't sound like, you know, it's not squeezed or something, I, I get right to the horn. I, I just find people don't care about the mouthpiece as much um, at younger, younger groups. So I always find ways to sneak it in. Um, lots of like call and response, buzz your music. Um, but, but in general, I always find with, with younger students, the faster we're making sound on the horn, the better it's going to go. So we're going to repeat the same exercise. But now we're going to use the, uh, we're going to the next line there. Um, shoot for the C. And we'll do the same call and response. I'll play first, y'all play second. So here we go. Here's our metronome. With no drone yet, just, just the pitch. So here I go. Three, four. Breathe and play. No tongue. it again and, and even in the exercise right it says in the second time we're going to shoot for that middle C so we're going to play the drone on middle C. Here it is. Same thing I play first y'all play second. So maybe first So if, in a very truncated approach, because we're, we're going to try to cover a lot, um, and we'll do this every week, one, once or twice a week, probably on Tuesdays, we'll do these very fundamental, like, clinics, we're going to call them. Um, we're going to jump right ahead to um, 15. I can't do it right, right that one there. Right. Eh. Um, to introduce the tongue. Um, so I'm not going to make any assumptions about how different people articulate. Um... I use the word ta as my default. When you say ta, um, the tongue stroke's really important. We want to make sure the tongue is hitting 
right behind the teeth, right? So if we imagine this is the roof of my mouth, right, and these are my teeth, the tongue should be hitting like right there, right? Right where the tongue, the tongue, right where the roof of the mouth and the teeth join. So if you say ta, 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 that should be where the strong hope, tongue stroke happens. If it happens further back, um, like if you start your tongue right at your teeth and pull it backwards, you'll feel a ridge and then the mouth juts up towards the soft palate. Um, much like speech and articulation, when the tongue gets drawn back, it loses clarity. So we want to have the tongue at the front. And ta just puts it there. Um, two is another great option as defaults. I'll explain more why I, I use ta or two as the default tongue stroke locations and not toe. Um, that's a later concept. So right now the idea is just using a ta for a tongue stroke. So let's play um, the, the four C's in a row and we'll do the same thing with the four measure rest, right? So I'll play first, y'all play second. And make sure you're taking a good breath on beat four through a whoa shape. If we say whoa and breathe in, we get a nice quiet sound with lots of air. If we hear a or something, that, that's all tension. So breathe in with a whoa and we're going to play four C's with a ta attack. Here we go. Uh, I'll start. Here's our metronome. Ah, I remembered. Here we go. So I'll play first. Y'all will respond. One, two, to the next one same thing now we're just starting to move the tongue up or sorry the note up in the mouth we're going for an e and if you notice these are the first three notes of the harmonic series of our horn so we're going to work through those three notes this will be the goal in session one is finding those three notes we're doing it again with the assumption that everyone's played and we're not at starting out mode um and if you're someone like me and you're like oh this is easy what a great chance to just focus on the exact execution of emotion um this reminds me a lot of a session I call ones. What ones is, is you go and get a stack of books, like method, etude, not methods, like uh, instructional books, and you do exercise one, right? Very fundamental, basic stuff, and you go, I'm going to do this exactly right. This is like ones for me. I love it. So here we go. Uh, the E now. Same response. Call and response. With the repeat, breathing in through a woe on beat four. One, two, three. We're just going to jump right into the next one. So that's on a G. Um, when we play higher, as opposed to always thinking tighten the lips and squeeze, I like to think about using faster air or colder air. And that's the idea of this hand is as you move it further away, tightening the lips doesn't help get the air there, but increasing the volume, the speed of the air. So just try that. We're going to start here and then we're going to blow the hand away with the air. So we're going to go. And notice what happens as the hand gets further away. You're, you're going to have to use really cold air. And you can amplify that experience with the mouthpiece by going. And you find to, to keep contact as the hand moves away, we need colder air and 
sort of more focus in the aperture or the lip, less squeezing. Because if you squeeze and we chop the air off, it doesn't get very far. So as we go higher, and right now, you know, G is higher than a C. G is higher than an F sharp. We think about increasing the speed of which we blow air or make thinking blowing colder air. So let's go to the G. With colder air, imagining your hands out here and you're hitting it with ice cold air. You're trying to like freeze your hand. One, two, I'll start. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized I wasn't playing right now. I'm crazy. I was thinking something else. <laughs> One more time for me. That that's all on me. Sorry. One, two. It's a pitch. Nothing's ever too easy. Let me say that. I know I was I was looking at the E. I said I said G. I looked at an E and I played an E. The I. All right. So now we're gonna do the bottom line of this page. We're gonna stick it all together. So as you go higher, think about s sustaining the air. So I always like to think about like imagine you had like a ball out here. And it, it's hung on a string. Okay. And as you get higher, we want the ball to blow further away, and we want to keep it out there. It's enough to go. And the ball comes back, right? So the goal is, for the first one to see, we'd want to move the ball a little bit, and move a little bit more, and then a little bit more. And we want to keep it out there. Um, so it becomes places this ball is swinging. So to get the ball really far away, we blow really fast cold air. If we want a little bit. Or my three airs for a C and a G. So that's one thing I think about. And it's it's just the, this aspect of keeping the ball up and not letting it swing back down between notes. Because we want to avoid huffing each note. Ha, 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 ha. So easy constant air. Uh, last line, same pattern. I play, y'all play. One, two, I'll start. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, so that, that last one was meant to be chords, right? It, it's a little fun thing to throw in. So if you panted, what do I do? And you didn't come in when I tried to cue, just, it, it's a video, right? Scrub back, try it again. And that's the beauty of this is you can just keep repeating sections as you need them. I'll attempt a time code. Let's move on to the next page. Okay. <clears throat> a prerequisite for this is that you uh, know all these fingerings. If you don't know the fingerings, you know, write them in. Um, and, and I mean that because a lot of the time I find, sorry that metronome turn it up um part of my my approach to brass playing is that we don't think <laughs> as crazy as it is right we're, we're, we're not trying to think about what we're doing we're just trying to blow air and wiggle the fingers so if you don't know any of these fingerings write them in um so if you need to do that pause the video print it out write in the fingerings because the approach to this is just literally wiggling the fingers and letting the air track you up and down the scale so if you have to think about a fingering you're in trouble. And this is a pivot spot, right? If this was a junior high group, you know, six months in, we would be aiming to finish just doing the first line of B. And that's where we would stop because you know, there's going to be more reps. The longer you've played, the more of these we would do. Um, I would probably start us, uh, we'd probably do 
open with most groups i would assume we would do um the top line the middle line for sure possibly the bottom line if they're in high school just because those are scales they're probably working on in class um I just do them chromatically. So do the ones you can, print it out, you know, hit pause, print it out, write in the fingerings, because the goal here is to just blow air. These are my power scales, and I love them. Um, we'll do I play, y'all play. This, this, I really like this call and response work. It seems to work in this platform. So um, we're going to go stay at 60. Nice casual pace. Here we go. First one. So remember, the first, sorry, the first five notes is a lip slur. I didn't write in the harmonic fingering, so we're just going down through the harmonic fingerings. And then the second one's a scale, as is. The goal for this exercise is the lip slur sets up the air we need for the scale, and then we just do the lip slur again, but wiggle our fingers. That, that's the premise of this exercise. So here we go. One, I'll go first. Two, three. <sighs> And what we're going to do, we're going to put two beats of rest in between each one. And we're just going to go straight through. Um, you know, feel free. I'm going to go straight through. Feel free to rep them. Pause, right? You, it's a video. It's technology. You all know this. Here we go. It's the second valve. Two. Three. <sighs> First and second. Breathe in, lots of air. Finally, two, three. Awesome. Okay, we're going to keep going. Good time for the plug, right? Uh, these streams happen 1030 Mountain Standard Time for the foreseeable future. Monday to Saturday, I need to take Sunday off for my own brain. Or I'll be streaming just my normal session without dialogue. Uh, lessons available online, discount rate. Go to my website. Just send me a message. There's a form. Um, we'll get in touch. I'm also on, like, Lesson Face, Play With a Pro. If there's an online lesson platform, I probably have an account. Um, easiest way, email me. If not, you'll use those. Okay, <clears throat> now we're just getting into lip slurs. Uh, good old fashioned nitty gritty lip slurs. Um, and this also explains why I use ta as my bass. Um, when you get to the note that's at the edge of your range, you shift to an E. Ta, e, ah. If this is all in your range, at the very top note, shift to an E. The reason for it, if you've ever done the thing with the hose where you like cover it with your thumb and you know the water goes further without you having to turn up the air the air the water because it's a hose this is what that is um right by 
by shifting to an E battle, if you put your hand in front of your mouth and go from an A to an E, you, you, you hear it right away. You hear the air. It jets downwards, it gets thinner, and it moves faster. Um, so this idea of blowing air in a straight line and doing as little work as possible is supported by the use of vowels, which makes us more efficient. So if this is all easily in your range, humor me and on the top note, shift to an E. Um, if you find there's a note that's high for you, shift to an E on it. Um, the goal is, again, to minimize the amount of work we do, um, which is increasing efficiency. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that happens, but we just think ta. Even when I sing it, ta, you can hear my tongue's moving gradually, right? It's all about blowing air in a straight line. So let's jump in. Let's go a little quicker. Um, 72. That's a good one. Um, we'll just play this all together, I guess. Um, yeah, we're just going to play through it. So here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Four beats of rest in between lines. I forgot to say, make sure the the note in brackets is always played on the same harmonic fingering. Um, it's harmonic seven, it's flat seven, but we want to play it because this again teaches us where the horn sits. This is like the horn scale. If you ever did piano, right? First five notes, C D E F G F E D C. This is our version. This is our version of that. This is sort of our scale. I always call it. All right, so here we go. Second vowel. Four beats of rest in between lines. Big whoa breath on beat four. Here we go. And one, two, three. <laughs> Big open mouth. There. Um, uh, and a cute eye will notice I screwed up on uh, the one and two combination in this version that you see on the screen and that you have. It says it's a B flat. It should have been on the A harmonic 
I'm gonna update that and re-upload it. But obviously, if you're watching real time, oops. And, and that's sort of the, the challenge of trying to pump out, you know, five pages of music in half an hour. I make mistakes. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Okay, next page is scales. Uh, we go up to three sharps, three flats. I felt that would be a good place. These are the ones you know. I also want to take a minute. I had some questions that asked me, because, um, you know, yesterday was Maintenance Monday. Um, it's the thing I'm starting. Hashtag Maintenance Monday. Um, you know, send, send photos of you oiling your horn. Uh, what oils I use? Um, I have two different horns. You know, you see the other one over here, my triple. It uses, I use the same oils, but a thicker one. So on my, my Berg, my double, I use... Uh, it is Burt Bio Oil Light for the rotors, and then a heavy Burt Bio Oil for the the linkage and bearing plate. Um, on my triple, it's it's an older horn. It's like a seventy nine, seventy nine, sixty nine, old. I think seventy nine. Let me clean it up. Yeah, seventy nine, old triple. I use the. The heavy, super heavy oil. Um, see if we can focus and enhance. Remember that one. Um, <laughs> I use the heavy, and then I also use the heavy rotor oil in it. I love the burp oils. Um, inside my horn, I just have some like lanolin stuff I got from Daharo a while ago. I really like it. Um, beyond that, I just use regular like raw lanolin. Okay, um, that's maintenance Monday. Um, scales, I did a thing I said I would never do. I wrote them out. Um, and that's just for the necessities. Again, I, know I don't write out scales. Um, or variation, I think you should just note them. But we're going to work through them today. Um, go through the scales you know, write in the fingerings you don't. I find three sharps, three flats is a good place to be. Um, sort of as a younger player. Um, obviously the goal is 12 major, 12 minor. Plus your, you know, chromatic, whole tone, and your modes of limited transposition. So your your enhar enharmonic, their diminished scales or octatonic, whatever you want to call them, uh, both semi whole and whole semi, as well as your pentatonics. Um, scale enigmatic is fun, right? There, there there's so many scales and all your modes. Today we're just gonna do we're gonna play through the basic scales top to bottom in a very like band fashion. Pick your octave if you have to change it. Um, we're just going to play it together, and we'll take some time off in between. So here's the first one. Um, let's bump up the tempo. 72 is brutal. Uh, let's do 92. That's a good tempo. Uh, arbitrary choice. All right, here we go. 92. Uh, first one, concert FRC major. Oh, remember, on beat four, take a big whoa breath. Or three and four if you have bigger lungs. Here we go. And one, two, three. Um, if you want to challenge yourself, do it all on a single horn. Do it all on your your F horn. Um, if you're looking for some challenge, or just play regular, whatever you want. There we go. Uh, B flat concert R F and one, two, three. <sighs> the same one slurred and one two slurred <sighs> breathe wherever you need to um preferentially breathe after the top note all right so let's go to uh b flat major r b flat or concert e flat here we go one and two, and one, two, three. <sighs> Repeat it, um, either as is or up the octave or down the octave, depending on what you're working on. I'm gonna go up, and one, same one. <sighs> Uh, 
that, we're gonna repeat that for Matt. That was really bad. Sorry, I lost the A's. Um, one, two. <laughs> So, uh, a, a, sorry, a quick learning moment on my mistake. Um, when I repeated it, I, I quickly thought through what happened, and I know what happened. I reached the high A, and I did that thing I talked about. I squeezed the lips to try to get the note out, so it stuttered. The, on the way up, it stuttered. On the way down, it, it hardly spoke, because I was squeezing this way. Um, so the second time through, I just really thought about these muscles and, and keeping them be the things that pull. That might mean nothing to you if this is your first time here. If you watch the first warm up of like any session we've done, I explain the the three different muscular parts of that the embouchure and how I warm them up as well as the jaw. We didn't cover that today. We'll do it again tomorrow because it'll be how we start everything. Um, in brief, all the time descending in the high range pedal. I hope that made no sense because that was terrible. I shouldn't have said anything. All right, so here we go. E flat major, concert A flat, tongued. One. Two, three. <laughs> Repeat it slurred, up or down, down the octave if you want, or same place. And one, two, three. <laughs> do that same one now as written fortissimo tongued um a note about that as the metronome is not on i'll turn it on um when we play loud we want to think about using not necessarily a light tongue but we don't need as much tongue you can sit to a d vowel da ta da da it's a little softer or you can just think less tongue i think less tongue more than swapping vowels Again, I don't like to work too hard. So, E flat, fortissimo, accented, sustained. Right. One, two. Now we're going to go right to G or C concert. We're going to play piano slurred. Super soft, super slurry, and I'm going to turn on the metronome like I said I would. Here we go. G slur. And one, two, three. Try it even softer. One, two. Um, this is a chance you may want to scrub back and do them again after I say a thing. Um, in addition to the tongue, when we play loud, because there's so much air and volume and speed, we need less chop. Often I find when I work with people, when they play loud, they use more chop and more tongue, and then there's too much air and the horn blows back in your face and you will lose every time. So when you try it loud again, think about saying how relaxed can you keep the corners the focus is here. Stay nice and relaxed and move a ton of air. The air will take care of it. In contrast to that, when we play soft, we need a little, we need more, I don't want to say more effort here, but we need to keep the focus in the corners nice and stable and the aperture really focused. So we really think forward with a lot of fast moving air. A lot of times when people play soft, they just don't use air. We think about taking our air stream, you know, it's, it's going this way, right? And it's going pretty fast and we narrow it down really really tight and we make it go even faster because we need to be remember our whole concept is we want the air to make the lips vibrate if we slow down the air we'll have to use tension and it's and we want so when we get soft we think really firm focus in the corners focus the aperture forward blow a really cold air i always imagine if you hold up like a, a sewing needle and you're trying to blow air through the eye of the needle trying to thread the needle with this very intense, very cold air. Um, 
So go back, maybe try it again. Experiment with that. We're going to go on to D major. Um, just tongues. And one, two, three. <laughs> Keep that woe breath. Let's go with that A. If the A feels low for you, think of the word woe, toe. Engage the jaw, open, to get the low A. And uh, one, two, flirt. <sighs> Or down the octave two three or sorry or where it was again one two three and now same place again or up or down the octave Awesome. I keep forgetting to turn the metronome. Sorry. Um, so a thing about this is that um, when you know an exercise books, they often have crescendos and diminuendos when you do scales. It, it's literally because of what we talked about. As we go higher by crescendoing, we tend to use faster air and we don't force things shut. Um, awesome. We're going to jump ahead. I have two exercises here. You can pick which one you want to do. Um, E1 is a simple tonguing exercise. So... Yeah, E2 is a double tonguing exercise. I'm going to do both of them. You can do both. You can do one. If you don't double tongue, whatever, um, don't do it. So this one, because I'm going to have to scroll to keep it all in frame, it sort of works. Actually, that'll work. Um, so we go ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, 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 ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, and repeat that. We're going faster than 92, though. Um, we need something where we can work on a pivot. So this is where you learn. I have a really slow uh, single tongue. So like 116 for me is hard to do 16s repeated. So my pivot's really early. So I'm doing 120. Taka, 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 ta. Um, just because the goal here is to focus on a good clear trip double. Um, you know, we could, we could take this up to like 208 if we wanted to, but it doesn't matter because we're working on clarity of the vowel. So same thing for the single. If you're doing ta... Ta, 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 ta. You just want a clear tongue. So here we go. I'm going to play through both. Play whichever one you know, or do both. Here we go. Uh, here's E. I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with E1 just to to really work on the single tongue. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> I trick some people um, there's not a measure of rest between each two bar two bar so the reason hidden inside this innocent looking single and or double tonguing exercise is also intervals so it what it, I'm hoping it does is it forces you on the half note before the retake to the next system to keep your air going and then you're also learning a quicker recovery breath. So, so we've snuck recovery breathing and intervals into this innocent looking double exercise. So now I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna do E. 
Um, a way to work on your double tonguing too is you could do this. You could do E1 as a supplemental exercise and go ta, ka, 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 ka. Treat it that way if you want. Um, so here we go. Uh, do the same one you did again. Do the other one. Here we go. One, two, one, two. <laughs> So that's the end of the planned stuff. Um, I wasn't sure how long it was going to take to get through. Um, ne next, I got through this metronome. Um, next time we do this, it'll be um, slightly different. So what I'm going to do is much of what I did yesterday. I'm going to pick an etude that I like. Um, whoop, what I'm working on. And I'm going to... Um, finish with some kind of etude uh, studies what do I want to do something I know I guess <laughs> that would be brutal um, where is it as, as I'm struggling to find it here B B B B. where is my barbito okay I'm gonna do something else uh, here we go If you're ever looking for a great collection of exercises, I want to do something in the low register. Um, Ah, there we go. Okay, I am just gonna play through uh, this this little ditty. Um, I'll stop on a resolution. Um, again, try to end your sessions with something lyrical, um, something you like playing. Um, Jim o Jim told me this thing. I think he got it from Dale. Was this idea that you know the last thing we play should be musical, and and then when you take the horn out of the case, it still has that a good feel to it, not just like Ugh, scales. I love scales though. So here we go. Um, this is the last thing I'm going to play, then we're done.
there's a cadence. Cool. Um, yeah, play something nice to end your day. End your session with something nice. Usual, like, subscribe, do all those things. Tomorrow we'll be back into the trenches with a less, like, um, clinic sort of thing. And it'll be more what I need to do. Um, and hopefully relating that to things other people do and give people different ideas for sessions. Um, yeah, I guess give me feedback about this one. This was something very different that we've done. So it's an option, right? If you leave it in comments, I'll get them later. Um, but we're going to end the stream there. Thank you for stopping by. And, you know, wash your hands. I don't know. Just wash your hands. Okay, bye.